Okay, the year is 2006 and the location is the Great Nippon where I should have been born. The rhythm game craze sparked by Parappa ignited by DDR is about to be killed by instrument games. Fuck. Okay, to clarify, that death is in the future. Right now we're worried about Yeah, uh, this is a good segue. Just a week before Whose Beef Is It Anyways, Rhythm 10 Goku is released. The series started as a game idea by Japanese lyricist Sunku. Unfortunately, he also didn't know how video games worked, so he contacted and pitched the idea to Nintendo. This was a new way to play rhythm games, as with most, you have to time your button presses to the notes on screen. This meant unless you were the guitar hero like this guy, Oh my god, I'm gonna have an aneurysm. You had to focus on the screen. So while the theme of these games was music, it was more of a reward for playing well and not the key. So what made Rhythm Tengoku different? Well, what usually takes up like 60% of the screen just doesn't exist, so there's a start. A r r r rhythm game without notes? That's like playing Tetris without blocks or Call of Duty without people that had sex with my mom. In short, it's basically a minigame collection full of playable music videos. Visual note indicators are mostly removed and you have to rely on your sense of rhythm. So you bust through five of these stages, right? And what could this remix be a remix of? Hi, yes, is the remix of the previous five games in the column? I mean, yes, but you need to answer in the form- Fuck yes, this is so easy! So Rhythm Tengoku is overall pretty good. But there were also some areas for improvement. Some games felt like they had really odd timings. They just didn't feel as good as others. And of course, being on the GBA sort of limited the scope of songs. It never saw a release in the States for obvious reasons. So after a successful arcade port, which, <laughs> yeah, I've also played. I mean, I play foreign arcade games. It's, it's not a big deal. Rhythm Tengoku Gold is released, AKA Rhythm Heaven. It's even better. Yeah, this isn't one of those times where I get to be a boomer and say, The DS installment is notable for being the only one to have the dreaded gimmick as a mandatory part of the experience. And honestly, while the controls take some getting used to, they're good. You can see all the action on one screen while you tap and flick the other so your hand doesn't really get in the way. The songs and stages, in my opinion, are mostly better than the first game. It also does a great job of establishing a consistent art style for the series. It was kind of loosey-goosey in the GBA entry, but now you can tell it's all a part of the same cinematic universe. There's also the addition of various rhythm toys like... Business card? I mean, if you're happy, I'm happy, but I, I just feel lied to. Another improvement is only having four games in a column instead of five. It doesn't sound like much, but it makes earlier remixes less chaotic. I mean, four is just a smaller number than five. I can prove it using this formula. Nintendo wanted this game to be a hit. I mean, you don't get 2009 Beyonce on board and say, Meh. However, I have a sneaking suspicion that it might have sold under expectations. I mean, this is the DS we're talking about. Sure, 3 million is a lot, but if you look at another DS game with similar marketing, I don't think you need a formula for me to tell you which number is bigger. If you do here. So the series had a respectable beginning of life in the West. Maybe not quite the paycheck Nintendo was hoping for, but not bad. So let's have a safe entry, say on the Wii, with very easily marketable stages, gameplay improvements, some of the best songs in the franchise. 
Yeah, you can see the joke coming. It's not very clever. Beyonce's gonna be pissed. With the Wii's insane benchmark of three, we're able to listen to songs beyond the realm of chiptune and compression. This also means the stages are more visually appealing than ever. And some of the stages, most notably Ringside, have become insanely popular independent of the game. Emphasis on independent of the game. I don't know why, I'm not a- I'm not an industry insider, mm -hmm. okay? I'm not a business analyst. Mm -hmm. I am just a guy. Now we enter what I like to call the dead zone, because rhythm games have pretty much been murdered at this point, and it looks like Rhythm Heaven may have joined the culprit six feet under. And by the way, I'd like to point out some bullshit. When Smash 4 was getting released, the mode Smash Run existed and enemies featured in that mode, well, what do you know, they all had a link to a fighter in the game. Whoa, 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 what's this? A sneaky spirit from the game Sneaky Spirits from the game Rhythm Tengoku? That must mean a Rhythm Heaven rep is in, like nobody, because they cut him. A few years later, surprisingly, we got a sequel. Yeah, but just in Japan, don't get too excited there, bud. Next, I'd like to announce a game that combines some great selections from some great games. Rhythm, Rhythm Heaven. <laughs> Out of nowhere, Rhythm Heaven Megamix was announced to be coming stateside. Which, you know, would be cool if I didn't already buy a Japanese copy of the game, so maybe think about that next time. Anyways, this is a compilation in the same vein as WarioWare Gold, where it's only like 40% new stuff, but it's all packaged in such a neat way that it's worth considering even if you own everything else. It even has a story, and that story is that I, I like this dog. The best new feature in Megamix has to be the assistance that the bottom screen provides. While well, note indicators are still minimal, you can see how far you're off by now. And a lot of the new games here are some of my favorite in the series. And that's kind of where we are now. Despite the fact that these games got better and better, I don't think we'll see another one. This wasn't a chibi robo problem where they said, eh, just do whatever, if it fails it's probably the robot. And I think the reason the series underperformed is because it's kind of abstract. I mean, in Guitar Hero, you just fake playing a guitar. Yeah, cool, I understand that. Beyonce, what does this have to do with music? Tell me right now, there is far too many monkeys on my screen. <laughs> 